In this video, we are focused on transmission or A, B, C, D parameters. <clears throat> so um, this is used mostly in power transmission or, or devices that clearly want to relate one port to the other port. So uh, for example, if let's say, let's assume V1 and I1 are the input, they want for a given input to find an output. As the name implies, um, this particular parameter is basically A, B, C, D. Uh, this is only in one way this particular parameter kind of breaks away from all the other one. All the other one, we just use the designation for, uh, for the location in the matrix to say where they are. In this case, they just simply use A, B, C, and D. So, um, so how, how does this fit into the calculation? What it is, is if you give me what the voltage and the current for port 1 is, then we can use this uh, uh, parameter to easily find what uh, V2 and minus I2 are, which is the values on port 2. If you notice, this is the first of the, of the five parameters Z, Y, G, and H, and A, B, C, D that we've talked about. This is the only one where the one of the parameters, one of the variables that we are using in here has a negative in front of it. So that's important to remember. Okay. So now if you follow the, the process we've had in the past, we can write this as a simple equation of V2 is equal to A, V1 plus B, V, uh, I, one and then minus i2 is equal to c v1 plus d i1 and once again we can apply what we had uh, learned before which we say basically if we want the easiest way to find the parameters is to come along and say okay what if i1 was zero if i1 was zero then I can calculate basically A as V2 over V1. And from the second equation, I can calculate C as being minus I2 over V1. <clears throat> and again, this uh, A is unitless, C is Siemens, sometimes represented with A, S, or sometimes represented with upside down omega called most. <clears throat> Okay, either one step. And then another uh, possibility would be if uh, we come in and port one is shorted. So this was port one open, open port one, and this is basically short port. And in this case, if V1 is equal to zero, then we can find B as V2 over I1, and you can see that's volt over amps, so the unit better be ohms. And then we can also do D, and D is going to be minus I2 <coughs> over I1, which is unitless. Great. So we pretty much now have the parameter uh, following the trends we have. Let's go ahead and take bring back our example and see if we can find the parameters for the example we had. And so let me go ahead and grab this one. I'm not sure if it's in my, uh, uh, buffer. Um, so let's go ahead and copy that and put it in the buffer, copy it in the buffer, and then we'll come over here and paste this. So again, um, my old adage is that if you have any, every time you do one of these cases it's important for you to recopy this to make sure that you're still um, you're still there for what you want to do and also it's probably a good idea to have this equation in front of you as well uh, so <clears throat> so so we know what it is that we are looking for so I'll just put that one here as well so we know what we're looking at okay so in this case, that's what we want to do. So let's go ahead and use a different call. Let's say red in this case and say, okay, in this case, we are assuming, uh, you know what? I, I1, somehow that didn't come with it. So I1 has to be zero. 
for this particular case, which I1 is equal to zero. So what does that tell me? If I1 is equal to zero, um, uh, that basically tells me that the voltage here is zero, great. It tells me that the voltage from here to here is V1, and um, that's about as much as it tells me, I think. So the first question is, can I find V1 or V2? Well, great. So one thing we know is that the current through this loop, this let's call it IA, is the same. So the 250 ohms have the same uh, voltage. So I, in a sense, we could basically say if the voltage up here, from here to here is V2, and then that's a, just a simple voltage divider, I suppose, and we can we can do it that way. So, <coughs> so we could say that V one is equal to um, the I A would be the V two over two hundred and fifty, so two hundred plus fifty over V two, and if I want a V one, then multiply it by fifty. So great. So that was easier than I thought. Um, so, so the ratio would be basically V2 over V1 is going to be equal to, uh, cancel, if we clean this up, that's 50, and this cancels out, this becomes a 5, so this is 5 over 1. Great. So that's done, and that's a unit list. Well, we found our first parameter, but hopefully everything is this easy. So let's go over here, and this one is I2 over V1. So that might be a little more challenging. Let's see what we know about this. <clears throat> so um, we know I2, um, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mess a little bit just to make it, uh, well, that's fine. We can leave the arrow here, uh, and this is IA. So if I write the KVL for IL, what would I, IA, what would I get? I would get basically 50, I A plus and okay so that's good so I got 50 I A that's also V1 which is fine and then we go back around we've got 150 but this time is I A minus minus I2 okay so did I get everything no nope. one more thing plus 200 I A equal to zero. So based on this, I think <clears throat> we're pr <clears throat> in pretty good shape. I1, I2, and I V1. I don't have any V1 in here, but also looking over there, I see that V1 is simply 50 I A. That's not bad. So from here, I know I A is equal to V1 over 50. Okay, that's cool. So I've got V1 brought into this one. I have V2. So that is a done deal. So let's let's do a little cleanup here, though. Let's clean this up. We've got 50, 150, and 200. So 200 and 200, we got 400 IA, if I do my addition right. And then I've got uh, minus, I believe, minus, minus. So was that right? So nope, 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 that's correct. That's correct the way it is. I believe the current through here is IA, but that current is going that way, so minus I2, yep, yep. So we've got 400 IA minus 150 I2 equal to zero. So now I need to do a little cleanup where I've got to put VA in here. So I can take this and plug it in here. That'll be 400 V1 over 50. Doing a little more cleanup on this here, we got 8v1 from here mm, equals to 150i2. We're almost home free here, so what we're looking for is C, which is i2 minus i2 over v1. So C is minus i2 over v1. From here, we had that i2 over v1 is equal to... 8 over 150 so this is going to be minus 8 over 150 that was that was nice okay so now what we got to do let's go up here and try to do the other piece of this which is finding the b under the condition where v1 
is equal to zero. So V1 being equal to zero means this is shorted. So if that is shorted, uh, and V1, what do we want? We want, ooh, bunch of stuff. So we want V2 over I1. I think we probably have to once again do the KVL business here. So uh, we're gonna have I1, we're gonna have here I3, just a different number. So if we do a KVL at I1, what are we gonna get? We will get um, 100 I1 plus 50 I1 minus I3, so that's good. And then if I do a KVL at I2, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I3, we don't want to do I2, too many unknowns. I3, we got 50, I3 minus I1 plus 200, I3 plus 150, um, I3, minus minus i2 this time or plus if you want if you prefer it that is equal to zero okay so which one should i find well um, um actually this this uh, lends itself to finding the i2 minus i1 so is there a way for me to get rid of i3 in this equation you bet i can so if you clean this up you got 100, 150, so you got 150 I1, it's equal to 50 I3, so that's cool. From here, I can get I3 is equal to 3 I1, and then I can plug that back in here. After. Let's clean it up. Well, let's clean it up first before we put in 50, 200, and 150, that's 400 I3. Then we've got 50 I1. And then we've got 150 I2 equal to zero. I'm going to replace I3 with I1. And I've got 1,200 I1 minus 50 I1 equal to minus 50 I2. What am I looking for? I am looking for D, which is D, which is minus I2 over I will just make sure. Yep. So in here, um, you can kind of see from here that these two together is 1150. So I, and then it's, there's a minus sign. So this is going to be plus 1150 divided by 150. Great. So we got D. Now is there a way we could get B? That's our last parameter, I think. Done everything else. So the last parameter is B, and B is B2 over I1. So I'm going to go up here. B is I2. I'm sorry, V2 over I1. V2 over I1. Okay, let's take a look at that, see if we can figure out. Hmm. So from here actually let's let's do a little more on this one in here we know that um, i2 is equal to 150 minus 1150 on the top so that we got from here i1 so is there any way we could use that to make that relationship so if you look here one we say okay v2 is equal to 150 times i Three plus I two. I got to turn both of them to I one, which is fine. So I got 150 times three I one from here, and from down here I have I two as being uh, as being um, oops, minus 1150 divided by 150 I I one. So we can do the again do the clean what we were planning to do v2 is gonna be equal to um, let's see what I've done so it would be 150 um, and then oops, so 150 times 
3 minus minus 1150 divided by 150. Okay. And should have the answer any moment. There we go. So minus 700. That's the number I got. Um, so V2 is minus 700 times I1, which basically tells me B is going to be equal to uh, minus 1 over 700. Great. So now uh, let's go ahead and see if we can put it all together to answer the question of what the parameters were. Well, let's go find them. So A was what? A was the first thing we found, 5. And A is unitless. And then the second thing we found was C. C is 8 over 150 minus 8 over 150. So that was uh, C minus 8 over 150. And as you can see, C is I over V, so that's going to be Mohs or Siemens. And then what we got going. So now we're going to find B, and we just, the D was found as 1150 over 150, and that is unitless. And finally, the B found, well, after a little bit of a detour, we found it, and that's ohms, which is minus 1, minus 1 over 700, and the units are ohms. All right. So here is our ABC, now ABC, and after a long duration, long process, we found it. Uh, the process is straightforward. It does take a little bit of time, uh, especially as the circuits become more and more complicated, because in reality, you're doing four separate circuit analysis, one for each one of the parameters.